Hi, everyone. Welcome to this wonderful seven energy day where I'll be giving some free numerology readings. So um, you would just have to drop your date of birth and then any question you may have, just put it in the comments alongside your date of birth. It's just me today. My name is Silvio. Um, sorry, you don't get to see Heather's beautiful face today. She's taking a little bit of a break. So I thought I'd show you guys um, a bit of what else we offer uh, from our business, and that is numerology. Now, for those that don't know, numerology is basically astrology, but with numbers. Um, they're very intertwined. It's uh, a story of the energies, really. It's a, an analysis of the energies behind the numbers in uh, your birthday or in any numbers um, overall. Uh, numerology applies everywhere, right? And today is a wonderful um day for energies such as this for numerology for the occult um we got some seven energies we got some double five energies you may notice your mind is a little bit more um erratic today maybe it's running a little bit more maybe you're thinking about um uh, money a lot maybe you feel like you can't concentrate today it's like you're all over the place and you want to be doing something and you want to be outside um <clears throat> Today is very recommended that um, you do something with your hands, uh, something to help you gain that concentration back. And uh, for those, especially with that heavy five energy, doing something with your hands is very good, such as um, drawing, coding, you know, on the computer, um, I don't know, manual labor, something with your hand painting. Um, so you may feel like, that energy is present with you. <clears throat> you may feel like you're thinking a lot about money. Like I said, may have some interesting, it's a good, a good time today for starting some sort of business even, or starting something new in terms of um, making money. You may feel like you want to adventure today, like you want to just get out and be outside. Wonderful day here. Uh, I don't know where you guys are at, <clears throat> but uh, and it's a very, very good day for things like this. Like I said, numerology, learning something new, sitting down, having your alone time and diving deep into something. And I found myself doing that late last night and I was just <clears throat> watching a video and I'm like, why do I feel this incredible pull to just watch this and sit with this video for like an hour <laughs> and listen to it? Um, so before we get started with the readings, let me tell you guys a little bit about what I do. So I take the numbers in your chart. I look at them, analyze them. And based on any questions you may have, I can provide an answer for you um, based on what you're going through, based on the energies present for you during this time of your life. Uh, there are things called great periods where it's just called the Mahadasha. Uh, this is Vedic numerology. So it's a lot of uh, Hindu terms. And then there's a smaller period, which is the Antardasha. And Obviously, the greater period will, will have a greater impact for a longer amount of time. And the smaller period will have still a great impact, but smaller than the greater period and for a smaller amount of time. And looking at your numbers, looking at your date of birth, um, specifically your day of birth, that is the psychic number. That is what will most affect you um, throughout your life. Um, this is basically how you see yourself. Okay. Um, your one will say mainly your personality, which is kind of like your sun sign in tropical astrology or your moon sign in Vedic astrology. And this can provide the most impact on your life because it's how you think, it's how you act, it's how you express yourself, how, what your desires may be, what your pull is. Whereas your life path, which is all the numbers added together, is the overall energy for your life. It's how other people will see you. It's what happens to you without you really doing anything towards it. Um, it's kind of like your, your path in life, right? You may, some people, so let me give you an example. For those with like a base number one or a psychic number one, the, the day of uh, birth, so one, uh, let's say one, 10, um, 19th and 28th, those are all one days. Um, these people will naturally want to be leaders. They will be drawn to be very uh, competitive. They'll like to be first in everything they do. They'll like to succeed in everything they do. They like to attract fame. They want to be famous, right? Whereas 
those that are a life pass one don't necessarily have that pull but it's like people naturally come to them and they're like, why, are, who are all these people? What do they want from me? And they're looking to them to be a leader. So it's kind of like life pushing these people from behind to step up to the plate and take charge because that's what they're supposed to do. Um, and a base number one can also have this effect, <clears throat> but it's kind of like you want it rather than the universe wants it for you, right? It's kind of like our ego getting in the way of what we're really supposed to do and <clears throat> that is for a reason right it's it's helping us learn those lessons so that we can step up to the plate maybe later on or we can acquire those lessons for something else down the line that we may need and <clears throat> many things can be reflected in your chart like such as karmic lessons that we need to still go through qualities um skills talents that we may have future events that may be coming your way so <clears throat> Enough about that. Let's get into a couple readings. So I see here we have Martha first. Hi, Martha. Um, did you have a specific question for your birthday? For Martha? No, it doesn't. I no, don't think you did. So I'm just going to look at your your birthday and tell you a little bit about yourself. Oh, okay, cool. So see, Martha has the the one energy in her base. She likes to be successful. She likes to um, to have to acquire that fame. And this this kind of applied for you until the age of thirty, until you got married. And they say this because usually one matures until that time, right? So that, that's after thirty, we see ourselves as more mature, and we kind of let go of our previous desires, and we try to really align ourselves with our life. <clears throat> So this base number may have impacted you when um, you were younger and you may have felt like you always want to succeed. You may have always want to be, you know, be on top, start something new, uh, really go get it, you know, very masculine energy. And you do, you have a lot of masculine energy in your chart, which helps you with uh, your desires, with succeeding, especially uh, in anything that you may, may set your mind on. Um, very respected for your wisdom for the advice that you give. So in the career that you choose, in the path that you choose, people will flock to you for advice. They will uh, ask for your wisdom because you have the energy, the, the Jupiter-like energy that allows you to explain things to people and really be a guru and um, uh, express what you're trying to, to convey and give accurate advice. So that you're not just telling people what to do, but you can actually explain to them, like, listen, this is how it's done. This is what I would advise. I'm not necessarily forcing you to do this, right? It's kind of like a, a, a guide, a teacher. Um, you have good, uh, good energy for relationships as well. People see you as very attractive, which allows you to gather a larger base for yourself because people will flock to you. They, they, they feel pulled to you as they've, you know, whether it's they find you attractive visually or your personality or uh, your aura or whatever, you have that pull for it um, towards people. And let me see what your life path is real quick. Oh, your life path nine. Okay. So the interesting thing about life path nine is you may have a scar on your head. Um, usually life path nines do. And this is because... Um, life path nines are very impulsive. They, they like to, it goes well with your, with your base one. They like to really, uh, go at things and go in head first. So sometimes they'll get, or most of the time they'll get scars on their head. Um, and a karmic lesson for you will be, so the life path nines are very humanitarian. They're warriors. They, they fight for a just cause and they like to do something when they do it, they do it big. They, they want to help the whole world. They're humanitarian like but they also have this strong mars energy where they'll just go through any wall any barrier to accomplish what they need um so the karmic lesson for you can be like listen slow down um be careful not to trample over anyone when you're going through these barriers right make sure that we're not using people as a means to the end just to simply achieve your goal right um so that you're not uh you know um taking advantage of people and you're 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 still trying to help uh the large group 
but also taking care of the individual, right? That's very uh, Aquarian quality. Whereas Del V very much so for like stopping global warming or cleaning up the whole world. But then when it comes to the the one little guy that's like, hey, what about me? They're like, well, who cares about you? You know, it's about the whole world. And that's like a utilitarian philosophy, right? So um, for the sake of many, whereas the the one small guy, it's no, no big deal to just take him out of the way, right? So that's um, life path nine qualities. Um, be careful with emotions. Make sure you're expressing your emotions. You do have that seven energy can make it difficult. And with the nine energy, make it difficult for you to express emotions um right away so do be careful they're not uh building up and uh exploding later on onto people so that you're not uh um holding it all in and it can cause frustration lots of energy for you recommended for you that you know you have some kind of physical workout throughout the, throughout the day uh, so that you use this energy and you transmute it and it's, you know not just turning into frustration or anger right temper and frustration can be an issue if you let that happen but okay, hope you enjoyed a little bit about that, Martha. Thank you for for your a birthday. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, Martha, you said February third, nineteen sixty seven. February third, nineteen sixty seven. That's that's two nineteen. But yeah, interesting. <laughs> um, that's exactly how I am. I do have a big scar on my left leg. I was two years old. I'm a humanitarian. So I want to help you. I try to help the one. Thank you for. Yeah, no problem, Martha. Okay, um, who is next? All right. Maria, we got July 8th, 1970. Oh, okay. July 8th, 1970. Okay, so Maria, you have a very strong eight base energy. And let me see one second. Okay, and you're in life path five. Okay, Maria. So for you, your childhood could have been pretty difficult growing up, right? Um, lots of obstacles and delays and maybe just forced you to, to work hard and was like lots of challenges. Um, for you, the main lesson with this is it was teaching you patience and endurance, especially as a, a young kid, um, you know, having to work hard for things and not necessarily being given things easily for you has really taught you to um, pull yourselves up by your by your bootstraps, right? And learn how to make things happen for you so, so that you can really use that later on in life and, you know, start something of your own. You like, you have a very high standard in what you do, right? You like to do things yourself sometimes because of this high standard that you place on other people. And you don't really have the patience to be dealing uh, with all these people sometimes because you you know how things need to be done and you want them to do it right. So sometimes that can make you a bit more isolated and want you may want to um, do things yourself, but um, it can make you very, very hardworking. And these lessons of patience and endurance, like I said, will help you start things later on. Uh, they can, it's very, um, um, uh, what's it called? A Capricorn energy in which... Uh, you know, it can be very good business people. That's why eight is tied to the number of money uh, in some places because um, they they can be very good with money because they learned their lessons of money. They learned the lessons of hard work and saving and patience and endurance and getting through obstacles and failing multiple times so that they can, they can get back up. So it can make you a very good business woman um, and, you know, holding everything together so that you can really manage through all the difficulties and especially with your life path five energy that makes you very good uh in terms of business and marketing and communications and really gathering people around you to really set up the whole system and the whole company and whatever you may want to do um do be careful though with the the number of the number eight the lessons of forgiveness uh regrets that you may be holding on to are really pertinent so it can be hard for you to, for, to forgive. That's a lesson. That's a karma lesson that um, that comes your way with these energies. So don't hang on to regrets. These will only hold you back. Don't hang on to grudges. Um, any situation you find yourself will only keep repeating if you don't forgive it because it's the universe bringing it back to you and showing it to you again and again through various cycles that you need to just let it go and 
no matter what they did to you, I know things can be hard. You just got to learn to forgive because AIDS can really hold on to those grudges in their heart, whether it's little things or big things. Um, but it does make you very giving, um, very um, helpful to others. You may find yourself always helping others, uh, always giving up your time and energy. So do remember that um, this is not what you define, define your self-worth as, right? Giving to people doesn't necessarily mean that you're worthy just because, you know, you so you feel like you have to constantly give of yourself. So do remember self-love and not to overextend yourself. Um, because while you do may enjoy maybe pull to social service and always helping people, you can tend to um, extenuate yourself uh, if you do that, right? So um, just be careful with that and be careful with overthinking as well. Don't let your mind um, go on and on and on and on about things. Uh, you may be very skeptical in nature as well. So if you constantly think of it, uh, it can really just pull your mind out of your heart energy and you won't find that peace anymore, right? It can also make you very, very big seeker and always looking for answers and um, reasoning and even spirituality. Um, this can be like the spiritual ego always wanting more and more and more to learn more. I, I have that as well. And it's just about settling down, taking that piece of information, integrating it fully, seeing how it fits with you, right? And then seeing, hey, is there more, right? Don't, it's, if we move on without first integrating, that can really lead to, you know, just circular reasoning and going on and on and on and never really finding a truth that um, we can just hang on to. Right. So I uh, hope you enjoy that. <clears throat> um, let's see who else we have here. <clears throat> Hi, Susan. Susan, um, October 31st. Okay. Oh, Susan, you're born on the same day as me, 31st. I already know what I'm going to say for you. <laughs> so Susan has a very strong four energy in her chart. Um, she is a bit older, so that she may have mitigated down that down the line. So for you, Susan, um, this four energy may have really impacted you um, um, in terms of like being a very good planner, very good at planning, finding the problem, finding the issue, and working it out, and really taking charge and saying, "No, this is not how you do it. Um, this is your issue. This is what you got to do." You just got to do all these things and you're good. But then when it comes to you, it's like, well, yeah, that's a that's not really an issue. Uh, I don't really need to work on that. I don't really uh, I don't really need to organize these things. Maybe not right now. But in terms of organizing for other people, it's like, oh, yeah, no problem. Just do this and then you do this and you have all the right answers. Right. Um, so that can that can cause like lack of organization in one's own life. And it can really um, make you have a hard time with like saving money and you know you may acquire debts you may like make random decisions you may have even settled far from your original place of birth um and this this may have made you feel a lot like uh, an outsider like a foreigner um four is the number of rahu and rahu is always like going somewhere or is like the rebel fours have very strong rebellious energy they don't like to follow authority but they want people to follow their authority right they like <laughs> they like to be the ones in control uh, whereas the eight like i mentioned early they will respect authority but they also want to be respected for their authority right so they have very strong um standards for others and for themselves very strong ethical standards whereas uh, Susan is more like the rule breaker. It's like, okay, screw your rules. I'm going to make my own rules. <laughs> um, so um, this may have caused a bit of um, um, kind of imbalance and ir irrationality in, in life um, in terms of how you're acting. And uh, especially with the, with the karmic energy that's present in your chart, um, I didn't do your actually. I didn't do your life path. One second. Okay. Yeah. So with the with the karmic, you have a, a karmic energy in which it can cause a restrictive energy throughout your life, whether it be in terms of health, law, like litigation problems with um, government, things like that. Uh, it it causes like um, or any situation like in a relationship, it causes you to feel bound 
in some way to a situation where you feel like you're not free. And so it, it's always suggested that you be careful with shrewd um, language, mischievous behavior, things like that that can get you into trouble. Uh, again, with the irrational energy, because it can cause that karmic energy, right? Just because it's karma doesn't mean it needs to happen. It just means it's a lesson. And if you tap into these energies, that lesson will come forth. And then, it, you know, forgiveness and self-love comes back. And it's like forgiving others and yourself and everyone involved and learning your lesson. So that, that goes away and doesn't come back. Um, so, yeah. And you do have very strong masculine energy as well. And the the teaching which makes you a very good teacher um very very good even in things like these um occult uh like numerology astrology tarot whatever uh, makes you very good with those things um if you ever want if you get into that or whatever if you're into that um because you're a very good learner very quick sharp mind as well very, like, that's the thing you know how to make money but you also can spend it so it's like a very quick mind it's like okay i need to do this this is this and this but then it's like, ah, whatever, I'll just, you know, spend it, I'll make it back, <laughs> right? That's, I have something similar with that as well. But very strong masculine energy. A um, little bit less feminine energy, so do tap into that as well. Um, because kind of like the emotional aspect of things, may, something you maybe may struggle with. So really be um, aware of your emotions and what you're feeling so that you can also um, tap into that and let that express in your life as well and connect with your, your higher self through that heart chakra, right? So that's what I got for you. Uh, again, guys, if you want deeper readings, I go much deeper into these things. Uh, we'd look at your whole chart, things that may be happening um, on our website. And then uh, your lovely Heather will look at other things and provide more insights from your guides as well um okay so let's see who else we have i'm gonna go with sydney hi sydney thanks for stopping by sydney you also have this eight energy present in your chart and you are a life path um eight. Oh wow you got the double eights. Okay. So you got eight energy base and life path eight. Cool. Good for you. Now, what that means, this one's interesting because you still have those challenges that you do, but it's kind of like you're also baby because you have the double eights. So it's like people, um, it's like the, the universe kind of clears the obstacles for you. It's like, okay, the road's clear. But it still gives you a kick in the butt and tells you, okay, now you just got to walk the road, right? You got to go. Um, so it still makes you work hard, but um, you won't face as many obstacles as a regular eight, let's say. Um, very, very high intuition, though, for you um, because of those double eights in your chart. Makes you very in tune uh, with other people. Re uh, usually all life path eights will be able to easily read a person like oh you you're you're this type of person i can i already know who you are right it's very very intuitive and easily read people's facial expressions and what they're expressing uh internally even though they're not expressing it externally um so for you you have these double sixes in your life in your energy so that can make you very argumentative and um especially with the opposite uh sex the opposite gender um, so do be careful in terms of relationships or in terms of people in general that you're not just overly argumentative with them. You're not starting arguments for no reason or you're not overly bashful. It can make you very sarcastic. It can make you a bit harsh in speech. You always speak your mind. You're very blunt and you tell people how it is. Um, so just understand that that can trigger people right not everyone's ready to hear the truth and not everyone wants to hear the truth um but you do have very strong feminine energy and makes you still very empathetic and nurturing and caring um especially um you know towards uh you know and any anyone else that's suffering or feeling any sort of way um so it can make you very understanding um you can work in the background. You can work as a team 
you enjoy supporting people, but you also want to succeed on your own. You have very strong masculine energy that is driving you um, towards success and you want to be first in anything you do. Um, be careful with the eights. They, there can be some sort of um, uh, criticism from authority or even father figures um, in your life. So just understand that that's there and it's not something to take offense to or anything, but it's it's kind of pushing you onwards. It's balancing your very strong fire energy that wants to just devour and go and cause you to burn out, right? So be careful with that. You don't need to start many things at once. Um, kind of the eights are pulling you back and saying, hey, listen, um, settle down. Let's keep a balance. Let's not just dive in head first, right? Um, so... Yeah, hope that makes sense. But with with that strong eight energy, you can expect to have like your own sort of business or something that you do yourself. Because like I said, you hold everyone to a high standard and you you understand the lessons of hard work and patience and endurance. Okay, so Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Um, zero six twenty three for Wendy. So Wendy, you have a strong five energy. The twenty three is two plus three is five. Um. So, for you, you always want to look youthful. You may be the type that you know, may enjoy wearing makeup or you may always be looking through for things that um, that are helping you look younger or you just like being youthful and this can make you very attractive towards others and um, yeah, you just, it's just something that uh, helps you, you know, it helps you stay young and be lively and have lots of energy. Um, you enjoy traveling, you enjoy being outside and like I said, for you, uh, this can be hard to concentrate sometimes. Um, so, do uh, work with your hands, right? It helps you to focus, uh, get you out of your mind and leave all that mental energy. Make you very good at business, um, make, spending or not spending, making money and dealing with money in general. But for you, be careful with negotiation and getting your worth. So although you're good with money, it's there's like a contradicting principle here in your chart in which like, okay, when you go to, let's say, on the business and you ask for a price for your services, you may tend to undervalue yourself or even overvalue yourself. And it just kind of, you need to set a balance like, hey, listen, uh, this is what I'm worth and this is it, right? Um, figure out, maybe try and base it around other people and how, what their, how their businesses are going. Or just in general, when people ask you for things and maybe you tend to do them for free, uh, say, hey, listen, um, I, you know, I accept donations or I charge a small fee for this, right? It's just a matter of self-love and uh, making sure you're getting what you're worth. Uh, now, there are a lot of readings, so I will try to speed up a little bit to get to everyone. Um, for you, you also have um, this energy which makes your mind very quick. Uh, you're able to think on your feet, um, very bold, willing to stand up for yourself and for others when it comes to any sort of like injustice especially and oh you're always willing to take a stance very strong ethical principles for you as well and you can be very family-like you enjoy family you may even enjoy teaching helping others through your advice just know that uh mainly throughout your life these periods there the, you won't necessarily get the recognition and fame for what you're doing and that's okay you're just meant to really help others and work hard at what you're doing and provide kind of like that input and advice, maybe from background, from like a team setting, but there will be times in your life where you know, you're catapulted upwards and promoted or getting given the limelight, limelight and pushed to really step forward and be a leader. And that's okay. Not everyone is meant to be a leader all the time, right? If we had everyone, like, let's say in a team were leaders and everyone wanted to go their own way, nothing would get done, right? Some people need to be supporters and say, hey, that's a great idea. Let me help you, right? Um, 11, 11, what was your life path? Oh, you're, 
or left pad, left pad land. Okay, yeah. So, um, let me just jump, double check. Yeah. So for you, have the double nines. So you may have been very involved in like sports and things as a kid, or even later on, and it gives you lots of energy. Like I said, you need to use it. Make sure you're outside. Make sure you're you have some kind of physical workout. Otherwise, it can really build up and cause frustration. Okay. Um, um victor my uncle is here that's my uncle guys victor <laughs> so for victor he's born on the same day as me um 31st 1983 he's got that strong rahu energy of course uh eight one second so you're a very good researcher you got very good ability to research and work behind the scenes, uh, figure things out uh, for people. The one thing that that um, you need to be careful with, though, is that you don't take credit for your research or for what you do. So if um, if you figure something out, especially if it's big, right? Make sure you're saying like, "Hey, like I want a piece of this action. Like I'm, I did this. I I figured this out. I." I solved it. I realized it for you, right? Uh, you can find this quality in uh, scientists and uh, investigators, right? Um, very good ability to just sit down and say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to look into. And it's very, it's got, especially with that Rahu energy, it's very obsessive. And then with the eight, it's uh, methodical and it, you know, enduring. And it can sit down for long hours and say, hey, this is what I want to figure out. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Um, and especially with your, I think your life path eight. One second. Uh, yeah, yeah, your life path eight. Yeah, especially with the with the double eights, makes you very, very hardworking, and you like you're working twenty four seven. Like you don't stop. Um, so, you know, this kind of takes away from any like depressive thoughts because you're always working and doing something. You always need to be doing something. Just make sure that you rest. Because you don't always need to be doing something that goes for all eights, all people with eight energies in their in their numerology. Just relax. Like you don't have to always be doing something. That's not how you define your self-worth. Your self-worth comes from you naturally. You you feel worthy just because, just because you exist. It doesn't mean you have to always be doing something to to be worthy, right? Um, so make sure you're taking time out for yourself to react to relax. You're also very good at reading people and really tap into your intuition because it's there. And there may have been, um, and I know this is true because it's, it's my uncle, there, there was an early death in your family, separation in your family when you were younger, um, and that's in, in your chart. Um, but it also makes you very flexible, yes, but it is balanced with your double eights, but it makes you very flexible in your ethics. It makes you very adaptable to any situations that come your way but it also makes you very flexible morally. That doesn't mean you're an outright liar, but it does mean that uh, you're more able to shift your beliefs. So you don't necessarily need to hang on to a belief uh, every day. You're able to kind of just be like, hey, okay, this is a new belief. This is cool. Hey, maybe I'll adopt it. Oh, this is cool. Maybe I'll think about it. You know, Maybe I'll be this way now. Maybe I'll be this way. So that's in your chart, but it also makes you very good um, at explaining things to people and be careful with showing off in terms of your family or what you believe in, like your spirituality, things like that, um, because that can tend to really elevate your ego and um, you want to stay away from that. <laughs> but yeah, very strong masculine energy in your chart really helps you elevate yourself in everything you do. And be careful with the Rahu energy, it makes you a bit irrational, like I said, in terms of planning and things like that. So be careful with your money can cause extremes in your money, very high to very low, um, if you're not careful. But the double eights do help you with money. So when you get to a point where you feel like you're very high, exercise more caution. And if when you get to a point where you're very low, just know it'll come back because you have the skills and the qualities to do um, uh, what you need to do. Um, yeah, we sh thank you, Martha, for stopping by. I Yeah, I, I think Heather and I should be <laughs> Definitely doing both of these lives together. That'd be really cool. She's just uh, a little bit tired today. She's resting. <laughs> She's in the background helping me. Um, okay, who's next? Um, 
Willow, Willow, Willow. Willow, 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 where is your birthday? Did I get a birthday from Willow? Oh, I got your birthday right here. Yes, uh, I see your question. One second. Let me figure out what's going on. So Will is going on through a bit of a hard time. Let me just look in through, through exactly what's going on with your chart. You got the double fours. Double fours makes you very good with um, planning, organizing things for yourself, actually, and taking care of responsibilities, being um, uh, dependable to others and to yourself, saving things up, you know, being organized, like I said, having a plan for yourself. Um, so that's good. That's very good energy to have because it takes away from the rationality. It makes you actually very rational, very dependable. Just a second. Okay, so I see what's going on for you. I'm sorry, so you have three fours. It makes you're actually a uh, potential master builder 22 life path. So for you, it's kind of like you, Trump has this energy, right? <laughs> so Trump is a master builder, but he's also a master destroyer. And um, you can see that with his numerous debts and bankruptcies, but also with his achievements, right? He was able to kind of rise out of the ashes like a phoenix through his numerous failures. Um, so with so the karmic lesson for you as, first of all, just a four, about the 22s, is that you need to just really relax and focus on where you are. The four wants more. Four is more, right? Four wants more and more and more and is never satisfied, especially as a life path four. And it will always cause you to say, okay, happiness isn't here. Happiness is over there. And I need to go get it. It's on me. Um, whereas it's kind of like, no, you're not going to find happiness by getting a new car. You're not going to find happiness by getting a new relationship. You're not going to find happiness by changing your clothes, your hair. You're going to find happiness by tapping into your seven energy that you have, which is very reflective, self-reflective. Um, you need to really dive deep into yourself and spend that alone time that you enjoy in which you're sitting with um, whatever bothers you, right? So depression is something that it's, it's an example of, um, or it's based on futility. Whenever we feel like we can't do anything, and especially as a four, you want to do something, you want to go get it. You you know you have a, some sort of pro, a solution to the problem, but it's like, what is it? There's gotta be something that you, know, that you can figure out, but not everything has a solution. So for example, someone that you know uh, got a divorce, they can be depressed because, oh, there's got to be a way I can fix it. Oh, there's got to be a way I can make that person love me again. No, there isn't, right? There's there's not always a solution and you're not always meant to fix things because things aren't always broken like they seem, right? So that person will feel futile since um, they don't think they can fix it. So then they get depressed. It's, it's, a, it's a feeling of powerlessness. And when we feel powerless, we try to get our power back through various ways. And, you know, that can cause various addictions in which they pull us out and make you feel powerful again and again. But the power is in yourself, is in acceptance and saying, okay, this is the situation and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. And then all of a sudden you feel better because it's like, okay, well, there's nothing I can do about it. Then why worry about it? Um, and that for you can come through meditation, through reflection. And what is meditation? Meditation is ex extremely recommended for, for you and those of strong um, seven energies, but also four energies because the mind will tend to wander and wander and go on and on and on searching for answers and answers. And then meditation is kind of just like, shut up, <laughs> just stop thinking. But that's not the goal. The goal is noticing that the mind is going on and on and on and saying, oh, okay, this is what I've been doing. Um, I can just relax. I can just say, okay, that's fine. 
it's okay to have these thoughts. I wonder what thoughts will show up next, right? It's kind of being present and realizing these thoughts aren't me. Um, they're they're not who I am. They're just showing up because that's what I've been focusing on. Now let me look a little bit about what year you're in, just so I can see um, when things may change energetically for you. Okay, yeah, so you are in a double six energy. This may have caused some sort of imbalance in your relationships, in um, the way you look, and you may have stopped taking care of the way you look. You may have stopped caring. Uh, you may have, there may have been an imbalance in your cooking or anything like that, and anything artistic in your life, you may have just felt like the sense of not wanting to, not caring about it anymore could have created much more blunt speech and harshness, much more, many more arguments. And it's being aware of this energy and saying, okay, I'm putting a stop to this. I don't need to have this um, in my life anymore because I realize uh, exactly what's been happening and that this energy will keep going for you until 2024, unfortunately. So you got two more years until your birthday in 2024. Um, and I say, unfortunately, but, it's their lessons, their things, their energies that help elevate your soul. That's what your soul is here for growth, right? And these things help you uh, in the end, even though it may not seem so right now. But every challenge is a lesson for us, right? Um, so just be aware that that energy is going on for you. Um, if you'd like a deeper reading, we can go deeper on exactly what uh, year you're in and what else to do and karmic energies that come with each number and how to alleviate those and things like that. But I um, hope that made sense for you, Willow. Um, let's see what else we got. Okay, Gina. Hi, Gina. Got to go on to a new page. My notebook here. Gina, Gina, Gina. So growing up for you, I feel like family was very important based on your three energy. Um, may have been very, very uh, prone to being around family. Three expands everything. Um, may have had even a larger family, um, but very, very communicative, um, very artistic. Um, very willing to express yourself and what you think, help others, maybe very willing to give advice to others, even though it wasn't always um, asked for. <laughs> um, it's very creative, very expressive, can't even make for good singing um, abilities. Some people say three is mercurial in energy, um, whereas I think three is more, uh, three is Jupiter, three. Mercurial energy is very rapid, and short fire, whereas three, the, the communicative, communicative energy of three is more slowed down and like, hey, yes, I like to talk, but I'm also listening to what you're saying and then giving you more ideas based on what you're saying. Whereas the five energy is like, okay, I'm going to talk and I'm just going to tell you what I have to say. <laughs> but um, very strong energy in your chart in terms of masculinity it helps you elevate. You can be very respected at what you do. Uh, in terms of your career, for your knowledge, for your wisdom, and this is really helping you uh, elevate yourself in that and drawing people towards you for that. You are a oh, you're a life path seven. Okay, so you're you're a seeker. Yeah, but you have the double sevens, which makes you very skeptical too, uh, and always demanding more and more reasoning and more facts to back up your beliefs because you're not satisfied and you're like well i need to find out the truth give me the truth and that's not no that's not the truth i need more evidence i need more uh so it's cause you to seek and seek and seek and seek and uh that's good up to a point like i said if the more you seek uh the less you find because it, it causes more and more questions so it's about tapping into your eight energy but also the the, the intuitiveness that you have in both the seven and the eight in which you can start feeling things out 
and saying, okay, that actually resonates with me. No, I don't have logical evidence for that, but I can accept it and hold it in my perspective, in my mind as a puzzle piece and say, okay, this makes sense. Um, I'm going to see what else matches up with this, but I'll hold on to it later on. I won't uh, reject it completely just because I don't have full evidence right now. So for you, definitely recommended meditation, definitely recommending uh, grounding, being outside uh, with your feet in the earth. Because when we're up here, we're in our, in, that's we're with our head in the clouds, right? Our thoughts, we're in our thoughts. Our thoughts are like a cloud over our head and it grows bigger and bigger and bigger the more we focus on that. So um, grounding sets to kind of pull you back out and into your body and like, oh, wow, what do I feel like? My body feels this way. And that's what meditation can do for you as well if you focus on sensations in your body. But you have the ability to, uh, like I said, hold multiple perspectives and say, okay, I can see the, the positive of that. I can also see the negative of that. So in a sense, it, it keeps you gridlocked because you don't know what to do with it. And you're like, okay, well, if I can see both, which... I don't feel like doing it because, oh, there's a negative and there's a positive. I don't want to risk it. And it can make you rigid. But just know it makes you a very good teacher because you can see all perspectives and even a good mediator as well, especially with your two energy and helping uh, in terms of conflicts because you can see all sides of a story. So these are great qualities to have in your chart and um, makes you definitely work well with others and even help you take charge in situations that need to be taken charge, especially as a mediator, you know, you've seen in terms in debates where two people are going at it, you know, when to let them go at it and you know when to stop them. Right. So it makes you a very good manager uh, uh, as well uh, because you can take two people and explain to them like, listen, this is what happened. So relax. <laughs> so they also make you very good with kids. Uh, Jupiter is very good with, <laughs> with kids. So hope that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, uh, I will try to get through all of these, um, but I will be stopping at 2 o'clock. So for any people that I miss, do uh, leave a comment or I will get to you guys in the comments later on. And do schedule a reading if you would like one, because like I said, I do go deeper into these things. Um, Let's see. Oh, no problem, Gina. Thanks for stopping by. Who's next? Jessica. Jessica. Hi, Jessica. See, Jessica has the five other E. She's very good at talking with people. Uh, marketing. There, she's a very good um, social butterfly. Could have been very popular uh, growing up. So for you, Jessica, it's kind of like okay, I want to talk to this person. Okay, no, I'm done with you. I'm going to go talk to this person. Okay, let me go talk somewhere else. You know, it's like, um, you got everything you need out of that. You're like, okay, let's let's connect later on, you know? And uh, you got their number or whatever, and then you like move on to the next person, right? So that's why mercurial energy can have a very short attention span. And for them, it's learning to concentrate and focus on one thing. That's why doing something with their hands will help them. Um, so the karmic lesson for someone with that base five, because the base still affects us throughout the life, even though the life path takes on, takes over after life, uh, after the age of 30. But the karmic lesson can be to say, okay, you're always fighting and looking for comfortability. How can I get more things to help me feel more comfortable where I'm at? It's kind of like the Rahu energy. It's very similar to Rahu energy. Um, so it's learning to be comfortable in the moment where you already are, even though all your goals and, um, achievements are necessarily accomplished yet. It's saying, okay, I am where I am and I'm happy with it. I'm okay with it. And those things will come later on. And the more you do this, those things come faster because you allow them to, you're not in this resistant energy saying, no, I'm not okay with this. I need it now. No, I'm not okay with this. I need to go get it. Um, right. So it's, it's learning. It's the same thing with concentration. It's learning to be focused on what you're doing right now in the moment. 
bring yourself back to the moment, right? Um, let me look at your chart. Very strong sun energy with the with the one placement. So do be careful. And the new things you start with, especially with Rahu here, that you don't overextend yourself. You don't burn out because you're like, especially with the five energy as well, you lose focus and start all these new projects and never get anything done. Okay, so start maybe a couple things that you really enjoy, Pick, make a list, the things you really enjoy, do those things, focus only on those things until you finish them and then start something new because otherwise you will literally burn out trying to start all these things, all these things, and then your head's filled with more things and um, you're like, oh, how am I gonna accomplish all these things now, right? And that just causes you more stress and worry. Um, but you do have very strong masculine energies and whatever you set your mind to, you will accomplish like very strong sun, Mars energy that gives you the confidence and the determination to, to really um, succeed. Just make sure you're not running over people, like I said, and uh, you're not um, um, uh, just pile driving through things and not worried about, you know, the little one, the little person. Uh, so that you're, you know, you don't accumulate any karmic energies throughout your life. Um, it makes you, uh, again, with the, with the five energy makes you a uh, jack of all trades. So you can be very good at a lot of things. Okay. But if you never focus on a couple things, you won't master anything. And I'm also a jack of all trades. I feel like I'm a jack of all trades and I like being like that. I like learning a little bit about everything. So make sure you turn that jack of all trades, master of none into jack of all trades, master of some. Um, because it's really cool energy to have really awesome to be able to learn about a lot of things and hold that information really helps you have really good memory. You can retain a lot of information. Um, and your mind actually works really good in calculating things like, planning things but it's kind of like it's focused on the negative um so like for example a bank robber they're very good at planning but like you're robbing a bank right so just make sure you shift your mindset if you haven't already from negative to positive that you're using your qualities for something positive you're not focused on the negative you may even tend to see only the negative in a situation and this can be an addiction. You may struggle with addictions also if you do this. Um, so do be careful that you're not um, judging a situation before it's even started based on what you think you see. Because like I said, you have the strong, you have a strong Rahu energy too with the four in which you can easily spot the problems. But that doesn't mean you still shouldn't try or that doesn't mean you should just reject it completely just because you can already see uh, a problem. This, though, is a good quality to have, especially if you're a coach or a teacher, which you have the energy for yourself uh, because oh, you're like, OK, I can see all the issues. And even though there's issues, I know I can solve them. Right. You have the determina determination, the ability to be able to resolve every issue. For you, you have a karmic energy here in relation to children in which it can cause you not to have uh, pleasurable experiences from having children or it can even uh, hinder your ability to have children. Now, we can look into your chart with this deeper. There's nothing to be scared about. It's just something to, be under to understand that sometimes it may not always work out. But... A six could come in for you to break this uh, uh, karmic energy during certain time periods and in which it allows you to have much better experiences with, let's say, your own children or being able to have children. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean you won't have children. For example, someone that's like uh, in the army can also have this energy. So they have children, right? But they're home and they're in a military base in like Afghanistan or something, right? They're not able to enjoy their kids because why? Because they made the decision to go into the army and that was part of their karmic energy for some reason, right? So just understand that that's there and something to be aware of.
Okay, I think I have time to do one more reading. Like I said, for those that I didn't get to, I will get to at some point in time in the comments. Um, did I skip anyone? Oh, I just did Jessica. I'm sorry. I think I skipped Julie. I'm sorry, Julie. Didn't see you. Okay, Julie, you will be our last reading. Julie, you have very strong seven energy. It makes you very philosophical. Like I said, a seeker, a thinker, someone that um, doesn't necessarily adopt any specific religious uh, belief system. Whereas you can be very religious, can be very spiritual, but it's kind of like, okay, yeah, I see where you're coming from with that religion stuff, with your beliefs, but this is what I think, <laughs> right? Like you'll form your own belief system based on all these other things. You put all the pieces together and you're like, hmm, this is what makes sense, right? So you'll have two people come into you, uh, come talk to you. One person will tell you what they think. The other person will tell you what they think. And you'll be like, okay, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're right too. But this is what I think. And I'm right. This, at the end of the day, my opinion is right. <laughs> right. So you form a third opinion. <laughs> um, so do recommend meditation for you as well. If you're always seeking, like I said, constantly looking for things can put you in the mind a bit much. Meditation grounding, very good, and will help connect you to a higher knowledge in which you can gain more answers um, if you pursue that spiritual road in which you tap into your own spirit, your own uh, knowledge, your own inner wisdom, because we all hold that wisdom uh, in ourselves that we can tap into all the time, um, right? All the knowledge in the universe is already there, all the things that happen have already happened right time doesn't really exist we're just experiencing it linearly so you can tap into a future timeline a future version of yourself and be like hey what'd you do to solve this problem and they'll be like yeah just do this right that's like you accessing your higher self and whenever you think back to your past like oh i wish i would have done this differently that's you talking to a previous version of yourself telling yourself hey do this differently you'll have a better outcome potentially um for yourself because I learned a lesson, now you don't have to, <laughs> right? Uh, very, I feel like, so there's, there's a combination in your chart, which makes you very musically inclined. You may have an instrument in your house, um, may like playing instruments, may enjoy lots of luxuries. You may have even plants throughout your uh, house with broad leaves. You have very stable like life in terms, especially in terms of luxuries, whether it's your own or enjoying it from other people's stable relationships as well helped it definitely makes you very attractive towards others and can even give you multiple stable relationships to be honest um let's see, let's see what life path oh. <laughs> yeah no problem jessica um sorry oh okay so yeah your life path three okay so life for you may have pushed you to be a teacher or some kind of counselor or teach or a manager specifically in things to do with the arts like i said you may be very musically inclined you may really enjoy painting even photography you may like working in the background right uh so you're not necessarily in the limelight but uh it can make you very good with social media and uh, photography in general and help you acquire a large audience to for the purpose of teaching them for the purpose of guiding them or helping them um so if you're not into that then you know whatever but it's it's kind of like your life path that's pushing you into that and very good learner so you can easily uh pick things up and uh you know learn them like specifically for instruments you need to have that patience and um uh, be able to um stick with something to learn it every day um but you're very artistic like i said if you're not into photography, you could be into photography because of this energy. Um, you know, photographers are always in the background. They're behind the camera. They're the ones taking the photo. Uh, so like I said, painting, drawing, the arts, you could be a teacher of the arts. That's that's basically 
in your chart or, or some kind of teaching in general. Maybe, maybe it was for you, but you didn't necessarily pick it up and you didn't stick with it. And you're kind of like, oh, I can't make money off this, but just trust it. If you trust it, if you go with it, um, if you show the universe you have faith in it, the universe rewards you for overcoming, you know, your own fear-based belief system. Um, but yeah, very good, very good teachers, especially of media and art, uh, people with this combination. And you have the ability to express yourself and communicate with others and draw people in large audiences so that you can market them uh, and bring more people and help your business grow. Um, and you also have the occult energy, which helps you study things like these that uh, I'm talking about, like numerology, astrology, um, tarot, and that can help you with your journey as well. But uh, okay, hope that made sense, Julie. Thank you, everyone, um, for stopping by. This was amazing. I'm so honored to be able to read your guys' charts and give you any insights uh, that you may have needed. And this has been an absolute pleasure. Hope to have Heather on next week. Maybe I'll be back as well. Like I said, for anyone that I didn't get to, I will get to in the comments. Um, and if you'd like a reading, our link should be pinned somewhere. I don't know. Heather's doing the background work uh, today. She's amazing at it. And our, our link is um, somewhere on our page. But the website is called decodingthemessage.com. And uh, you will find their online sessions through Zoom with us. Um, whether it's just me or just Heather or both of us. And I also provide PDF reports um, that come with the Zoom meeting, or you can just have the PDF report uh, without any face-to-face -face discussion where I write everything down for you and you can read it on later on. Uh, you can read it later on by yourself so that you don't have to deal you know, with me talking to you for half an hour or something. But appreciate everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.